everyone, it's Kelvin again, and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple trick that will instantly improve your watercolor paintings. So I've created a document here that will explain this trick, and you can download the whole thing in the description. I'm going to use it in this video as a kind of uh, explanation tool, but I'm only going to cover it briefly because I think it's best if we move on to real practical examples uh, as soon as possible. So the gist of it is this. Um, typically, when you want to create something that's three-dimensional, you'll add highlights and shadows. And I think almost anyone who has painted anything or drawn something understands that, but there's another side of this that is uh, often missed or at least misunderstood. So this misunderstanding is about the color of shadows. So often we think about uh, shadows as just being darker than the base color. So a purple object has a shadow on it, the shadow will be dark purple. And sometimes this works out and other times it doesn't. Like let's say that you have a red ball. Uh, how would you shade a red ball? Would the shadow be dark red or would it be something else? And this problem also comes to light when you're painting faces. So when you're doing the shading on the faces, the shading under the uh, on the neck area, what color should those shadows be? So the answer to that is this. Typically, the highlights are going to approach the color of the light source. So in this specific example, we've got a slightly warm white light. So our gray ball is shifting lighter and warmer until it gets to the highlight area. Now the shadow is the opposite. So if you have a slightly warm light source, all your shadows are gonna be relatively cooler. Now a common mistake here is just that they need to be equal in terms of saturation. So if you have a very yellow bright light, you're going to have a very, very cold shadows. It's unlikely that you'll have a situation where you have just one without the other. So an extremely saturated shadow, not likely. Extremely saturated highlight, also not likely. And uh, this is uh, pretty well demonstrated here. So when you have extremely uh, colored saturated light, it's gonna create extremely colored saturated shadows. And this is why uh, so often you see sunset pictures with these almost two kind of complementary tones very prominently uh, in the uh, layout. Now moonlight is also misunderstood. Uh, basically moonlight is a warm light. It's a very, very slightly warm light. And that's because the moon is getting its light from the sun. The sun is reflecting off the moon and we're seeing the kind of dim reflection of that warm sunlight. So the same is true, except of course, uh, much like in the case of a sunset, you have some extreme contrast, but the shadows will still typically be cold under moonlight. Now, when I first learned about uh, the color of shadows and the color of highlights, the first thing I thought was, that's nice. Uh, someday when I become an expert painter, I'll use some of these tricks. But actually, these are very useful for the type of illustrations that we do on this channel. One of the common things that happens is when you have an isolated illustration like this, it's just kind of floating in space. And when you add somewhat realistic or interesting lighting with colder shadows and a brighter, warmer highlights, you end up with a final, uh, a final artwork that implies a much larger scene. So when you hold these two different artworks side by side, you can see that one looks much more clean, much more sterile whereas the other one almost suggests it's part of a much greater scene that you just haven't painted yet. So with that, let's move on to a more practical example. So I have an illustration here that I've already painted, and to get this watercolor style, I'm using a paper texture and a brush kit, and I'll put links to those uh, materials as well as kind of an explanation of them in the description below. So first, I'll show you what I've got going on in the layers panel. Here's the body of the cat that has all the main colors, then I've got the face of the cat on a different layer above. And then as the very top layer, I have the outlines. And uh, the reason I've separated it is because I don't want my colored shadows and colored highlights to affect the details. I just want it to affect the body of the cat. So I'm gonna make sure I just have that layer selected. And I'm gonna start by adding a couple of highlights with the selection tool. And I'm gonna make sure it's set to freehand. So if the light is coming in at this angle, and it's a kind of midday, very slightly warm light. I'm gonna imagine roughly the highlights are probably gonna be along the tummy like that. So I'm gonna do each highlight one at a time because each selection that I make, I'll feather it. So the one on the tummy here is gonna be quite soft. So I'll feather that one out quite a bit. Then to brighten it, I'm gonna to go to curves, layer, and I'm just gonna raise that bottom node. And that's gonna very nicely and very evenly brighten those colors. 
There we go. And since my light source is warm, I don't have to add uh, any, any warm colors to this because my base color here is already somewhat warm. Uh, so just by brightening it, that's enough to get the highlights correct. So for the next couple of highlights, I might be able to combine some of them together. So on the face, add along the side of the leg, I guess, maybe along the tail. And those are all very similar, so that's why I was able to do them all together. And I'll feather those out. Same thing, curves, layer, and just raise the bottom node. There we go. So that's it for the highlights. I don't need to do anything else because they're already warm enough just given the base color of this cat. Next for the shadows, I'll grab the selection tool again. Same process, the freehand selection tool here. But first I'm gonna do a very large shadow kind of along the side. I'll feather that one out quite a bit. This is gonna be the largest kind of softest shadow because the body of the cat is a little bit curved. So I'm gonna to go to uh, the uh, hue saturation and brightness this time. It's a little bit different this time. And to darken it, because our shadows are darker, I'm gonna use the brightness slider to do that. So there we go, I'll just nudge them a little bit towards dark. Next, I'm gonna shift the hue. And if I shift it this way, it's going towards green. Uh, that's wrong, I wanna to go towards blue. Blue is our cold color, so I'm gonna go the other direction. And it looks like I'm passing through a kind of purple area. And over here is where I get to blue. So I think I'll meet it halfway. You don't always have to go all the way to the coldest version of that color. You could stop maybe after just a few percent. So I think this point is good. Now we have that saturation issue that I mentioned. Your shadows shouldn't be more saturated than your highlights. So since our highlights are pretty pale, because our light source is a pretty pale, warm light, I need to desaturate these shadows. So I'll lower the saturation and just try to match it. There we go, that looks a lot better, and we'll deselect it. Now I can look in here and see a few more places that I'd like to add shadows. Uh, just like with the highlights, I had several different highlights. I'm gonna do the same process, and wherever I think it needs a cold shadow, I'll add one with the selection tool. And there we go, this one is all done. And here's what it looks like when I print it out. Now hopefully this simple concept or technique uh, will really help improve your artwork. I know most of you have probably already heard about this, but actually I'm kind of a new artist myself and I just learned about this and I was totally surprised at how it changed not only how I see art, but also how I paint art. And I wanted to share that with you guys. And that pretty much wraps it up. As always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.